is Superior Sports Talk with Reggie Wilson and Luke Inman, part of Locked On Sports Minnesota, and it starts now. What's happening, everybody? Reggie and Luke back at it with another episode of Superior Sports Talk presented by Locked On Sports Minnesota. What's going on, Reggie? What's up, man? We got big game tonight. Looking Ooh. to bounce back with those T-Wolves. I'm stressed out, man. I know you're going to be there. We're going to get into it. We got a good one lined up for you guys. Reggie and I talk NFL draft just one week away from tonight. We're going to preview that game three T-Wolves Grizzly series back at home at the Target Center. And later on, we'll get into some what does it mean. I'm putting Reggie on the hot seat, talking twins, NFL, wild, plenty more. All coming up on Superior Sports Talk. All right, Reggie, you ready to roll? Let's do it. It's one week from tonight. The NFL draft is coming. Reggie, we got to quit messing around here, man. It's time <laughs> to get serious here, all right? Let's get down and dirty. I'm going to need you today to put your GM cap on now, okay? So you're Quasi up at TCO. You're in the war room. It's just interesting because you, you play out all these different scenarios in your head. So many simulations, right? I think it's because you've been influenced by all bajillion of the mock drafts that you've seen. And it's just like, man, I have no like I have no idea. I, I'm no more certain than I was a week, two weeks, maybe even a month ago with the draft just being a week away. A lot of defensive oriented, I think, as far as what people and experts are expecting the Vikings to go. But again, you never know. I mean, Randy Moss wasn't supposed to fall to 18 and the Vikings didn't need a wide receiver. But Denny Green said, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to pull the trigger. It's what makes the draft so fun and great because you just never know. So I'm going to lay out a round one scenario for you. I'm going to leave you a few options. You're going to tell me what you would do or or what you think the Vikings will do with this 12th pick. All right, you ready to roll? Let's do it. Notre Dame safety, Kyle Hamilton, my number one player on the big board. Remember, we had Jeff Risden on yesterday, Mm -hmm. his number one player on the big board. Cornerback Derek Stingley, who I know you and a lot of other people are really high on and, and tying to the Vikings. They're still on the board at 12. And the Pittsburgh Steelers, let's just say, have offered to move up for an extra second rounder in next year's first, sliding you back from 12 to 20. So three options, Hamilton, Stingley, trade back. What's your move? Hmm. If he's there, which I just don't know if he will be, especially if guys like you have him as your number one player on the board. Safeties I, don't go high, though. I don't get. Yeah. I don't know why. Derwin James dropped to 17 a few years ago. The league yeah. doesn't value safeties, but I understand what you're saying. Go ahead. But if he's there, if he's there, I mean, Kyle Hamilton has to be the guy, right? I hope so, man. I hope so. I don't know if he'll be there, Reggie. I mean, he could go as early as top five. Uh, but for whatever reason, the smoke signals are out. People think Kyle Hamilton, because of the – The lack of value safeties bring could Mm -hmm. drop to 12. All right, next one. All the top DBs are already gone. Sauce, Stingley, Hamilton, McDuffie. The phone is silent. Nobody wants to move up. The top defensive players on the board right now are are Utah's linebacker Devin Lloyd, nose tackle Jordan Davis. However, Reggie, I know you're going to like this. Not one receiver in this scenario has been taken yet. So let's go. um, You got your choice of the entire crop, right? Pick of the litter, or you could go defense. You can't trade down. Who's your pick? What name are you putting on that card? Oh, with, with, so none of the wide receivers have, they're all available. Anyone you want, pick of the litter. Jamison Williams, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Drake London, um, Christian Watson. I mean, you got your pick of the litter, or hey, you could go defense. Okay. No, you know I'm not going defense. So, <laughs> okay. So, I was just talking to one of my other coworkers uh, yesterday about mm-hmm. this. I don't know. I don't get it with Drake London. I'm not like the, the biggest. He's tough. And I'm an, I'm an SC guy. Like, I, I yeah. love USC. Yeah. But, like, I just, I don't know. He's, he's, a, he's a big possession receiver you're gonna take a a possession receiver at number one overall when you got these like Mm -hmm. cold-blooded killers behind him in the in the draft board like you got guys like Jamison Williams and Olave and Wilson being able to take the Mm. top off of defenses and Mm -hmm. you're drafting a possession receiver I just don't I mean I don't know I don't see it I don't see it no no it's a fair it's a fair evaluation he's got that Mike Evans 
kind of jump ball, basketball style, go up and get it. But I'm with you, Reggie. I think the league now has so many big physical corners. Mm -hmm. I think how you combat that is with the slick, smooth, route running, quickness, explosion in and out of breaks, the Stephon Diggs, the Tyreek Hills, the Devontae Adams. So I like where you're leaning here, maybe away from a Drake London and more towards one of those better route runners with more speed. So, yes. Who's your so, pick? all right, all right. Sorry, I'm deflecting. For me, it's Chris Olave. Mm -hmm. I want that guy. I love him. I, I love want him. that guy. I love like, him. I just think he's so smooth. He's very experienced. You know, you don't even see guys staying in college as long as he did. Like, right. he's got the talent to have, you know, come out the last two years. And I think, I don't know, man, just like watching him in, in college over the last several years, like the dude is smooth. Like I, I know everybody's like enamored with Garrett Wilson and, and all that. And I think he's great too. But man, for my money, like I want Olave because he's just smooth. He's a, a, a wonderful route runner, great hands, playmaking ability. Like that's the guy I want. He, he I, again, I don't think you can go wrong. We're, we're talking option one and one A with Wilson mm -hmm. and Olave, but I'm with you, Jeff Risden. He also mentioned Chris Olave over yeah, Garrett man. Wilson. So a lot of the general public has Garrett Wilson higher, higher on their boards, right, than Olave. But who's the best route runner in the draft? Risden said it, Chris Olave. That's what I'm after, the silky yes. smooth route runners like those, again, Diggs, Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams. That's how you combat these big, physical, long, lanky, six-foot-three cornerbacks yep. it, with these smaller, inside, shifty guys. And I think yep. Olave is going to have a great career. Maybe he'll never be a number one guy, but I think he's going to be an outstanding number two or compliment receiver. And guess what? We got Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen. I think he would make a lot of sense there at, at, at pick 12. All right, last one here. After a run on offensive line, wide receiver, and DBs, the Vikings are looking down the barrel. They got Trent McDuffie and Andrew Booth Jr., two cornerbacks, kind of in that second tier. Uh, other high-ranked prospects left on the board, Jordan Davis, nose tackle Georgia, Jermaine Johnson, a great pass rushing edge from Florida State. The good news is Kenny Pickett was the only quarterback drafted, meaning Malik Willis mm. is staring you in the face. The bad news is nobody's calling to move up. So do you pull the trigger on this top quarterback prospect in the class, or do you go back to the defensive side of the ball? Interesting scenario to play out here because what if, you never know, what if a quarterback and they were tempted uh, at, at pick 12, even with Kirk Cousins? All right, I know we said that at 12, if the guys that you're looking for are not there, you take best player available. But mm. I don't know. That would be a different spin on uh, on building for the present and the future. Yeah, yeah he did you know say I mean? that. Like he you, did say you, that. You you get a wide receiver and that's a luxury. You get a quarterback and all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, like I don't know. what are we doing now? And obviously, like you will get that quarterback to sit. And a lot of people think that Malik Willis is you know very green and and would benefit from sitting for a year before kind of taking the reins somewhere. And that's fine if that's you know your plan is to get them and stash them, you know, but. With the needs of this team, I don't see quarterback being a position that they should be targeting in the first round. Like, I think they need to grab a, a premium guy that can make an impact on that team right away, whether it's a receiver or somebody on defense. Like, I just – I wouldn't take a swing on a wide uh, – on a quarterback mm. that early in the draft if I were the Vikings. I think that would make a lot of fans be like, what are we doing? You, you know, this is not the class and time to take a random swing on a quarterback early. I mean, mm -hmm. you saw last year – Quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. Trevor Lawrence. The Jets took a quarterback at two. Zach Wilson and uh, Justin Fields winner. That was a great quarterback class, is my point. This oh, year, yeah. not the time to just start throwing out random swings on quarterbacks, even if you do like the uh, the, the skill set of a Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett. Hey, by the way, Packers and Lions, they're loaded with draft picks. They both got two first-round draft picks. As a Viking fan, Reggie, have you thought about this at all? What don't you want to see happen as a Viking fan round one of draft night? What I don't want to see? Yeah, not a, yeah, like something you'd be scared of, like, oh, no, they, they went and double-dipped and got two great – they went and got Chris Olave, 
and oh. Garrett Wilson. Oh. Uh, the Lions drafted Malik Willis. I don't like that. Maybe he could be good for the next five, ten years. I don't like that. I don't see the Lions drafting a quarterback that high. But I don't think so either. I'm not. I, you know what? I'm really not scared of of whoever they they pick. I mean, they take uh, Kayvon Thibodeau or mm-hmm. or Aiden mm-hmm. Hutchinson or something like that if he's there mm-hmm. uh, for that pick. Maybe maybe I'm a little scared. I'm just like, dang man, that's another guy we got a game plan against. You know, for the defense. You know, trying to be a high powered offense. But man, if the if the freaking Packers. Uh, trade up somehow or somehow players fall to them and they can replace Devontae Adams with the Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, or Jamison Williams. Like, I would be so upset. I'm like, dang, man, like, the rich get richer. Like, how do you lose a top flight receiver and and then gain another? Like, one of my friends made a, a point yesterday is there are so many talented receivers coming out every year in the draft and those guys are making impacts i think it is justifying teams not paying for receivers and it's like well you know the proven commodity you know debo samuel i know we'll get into that but he wants to be paid and it's just like well do you pay debo or do you just say you know what you know we we can get a guy like debo in the draft and it'll be fine like I, i think it's so interesting because a lot of the the packers fans are you know, maybe a little nervous, you know, mm-hmm. maybe maybe they're in on Debo, but maybe they're just a little nervous. Like, OK, who is Aaron Rodgers going to throw to? Like he lost his number one boy. Like we need some we need some help. And it's just funny. It's just like, man, they can easily reload in the draft and it could start in round one. A great point as far as those contracts, paying receivers, not to pay receivers. Remember, in the first round, you get that fifth-year option mm-hmm. on their contract, which just means you get another year, an extra year, to pay them that cheap rookie money. That's why a lot of teams you end up seeing trading back into the end of the first round to take a quarterback. Lamar Jackson picked 32. Ravens traded back up because they wanted that fifth-year option. So mm-hmm. um, great talking points again. We're going to get to that actually later on about Debo Samuel's situation and what does it mean. All right, moving on. Mm. Coming up, I put Reggie through the gauntlet. But first, the Wolves, they took one on the chin Tuesday night from the Grizzlies, lost 124-96, led by who else? John Morant. The Wolves still escaped Memphis, though, with a 1-1 split, which they'll gladly take. They head home tonight to face off in the playoff game inside Minneapolis Target Center for the first time since 2018 and just the third time since 2005. We're talking that KG, Sam Cassell, Latrell Sprewell era of those days. Love it. Uh, Reggie knows what I'm talking about. All right, so Reggie, (laughs) in this crucial Game 3 with a 2-1 advantage on the line, back at home, who or what is your X Factor going into tonight? Look, man, I I said it last show, and I feel like I was proven right, and Mm -hmm. I'll say it again. This team goes as Cat goes. Cat had (laughs) just another game that you probably just want to flush down the toilet in Game 2, and it's just like, man... You really want to see him just play consistent, like find out ways as the game goes along to kind of beat what teams are trying to do to him and and how they're trying to play him. And it's so, so tough to kind of have him in that position where his play just fluctuates game in and game out. I think what we've seen is that D'Lo can be pretty streaky. Mm -hmm. You know, you you sometimes never know what you're going to get from him. And then, you know, Ant literally tried to put the team on his back in game two. And you don't need him trying to do that. You need Ant to just play within his game, have fun, and, and go out there and let it rip. Yeah, really don't do the too guy, much. Yeah, yeah the, yep, the catalyst yep. is Cat, man. Like, yep. and, and the the Timberwolves need him to be at his best. They need t- at least twenty five from him tonight. Okay, the big X factor for me now that you brought up Cat, I've just been thinking about this lately. The last few games I've watched, is it just me, Reggie, or or has Cat really gotten himself into some bad foul trouble? The really worst early fouls. too, and, and not even good fouls, right? You watch some of those back, and they're just not smart, not something no. you can expect to get away with getting your best player in foul trouble so early like that and coming away with the W. Now 
they got away with it right against the Clippers. Remember that, that playing game. Mm -hmm. But they needed a total team effort to even do that once Cat fouled out with eight to play. They yep. needed Ant, D'Lo, Pat Bev, the whole crew to step up. Now, the Clippers are one thing, but playing without Cat be because of foul trouble and expecting the rest of those guys to just pick up all the slack, it's just mm -hmm. unfair and unrealistic to ask them to be able to do that against such a good talented complete team like the grizzlies mm -hmm. who are on a completely different level in my opinion than the clippers we saw last week yeah. uh, i'm gonna go back to d-lo i'm gonna double dip he was my x factor uh yesterday yep. certainly disappointed i think he's due right again those yep. four games they play in the regular season against the grizz averaged 31 and nine assists yep. and he's been crazy quiet these first two games i'm talking yep. absolute crickets i don't know what's going on but um, I'm letting it ride, double double dip into my X-Factor, D'Lo. I think he's going to be that guy that takes advantage of, again, all those extra looks created by uh, the attention Cat and Ant get. And um, but I want to get into some, just real quick, some player prop predictions, right? I looked mm. these up. Um, you know, I went to Vegas, pulled up some player props for tonight's matchup. And I just want you to give me a quick first instinct. Go with your gut answer here, okay? Mm. John Morant, start with an easy one. John Morant, over under 29 and a half points is what that's listed at for game three tonight. John Morant. Uh, I'll do under. Ooh, okay. He was under last game. No, you're right. He was. I just I have such a hard time when I watch John Morant betting and under anything on John Morant, but I respect that. Cat over under one and a half three pointers. Oh, definitely here. the over. Oh, loves the yeah. over. Smash is that a smash? You're smashing the over on that? Oh yeah. Loves yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, another one here. Ant over under 0.5 blocks. One half block. Do you think you'll get one block? I'll take, one block I'll take the end. over. Yeah, I'll take yeah, the I, over. I like that one. I kind of yeah. like that one. Give me one block at home. Target center's got him jacked up. Um, last one. Pat Bev, over under nine and a half points. Ooh. That's kind Ooh. of a tricky one. I don't know. You just never know what you're going to get with Bev as far as those points scored. You know, you know what? what he brings to the table, but. You know what? I'm going to take the over. I like it. Nine and a half. Yeah. You're going maybe, over. maybe like by 10 points, maybe 10 or 11 points. Okay. I'll take the over. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Just some fun over unders, game three <laughs> predictions. The dust has settled right after those first two games. They're yeah. headed back to Minnesota, play games three and four inside the Target Center for the Wolves again, their first playoff game since 2018. Third since 04. Target Center is going to be rocking tonight, providing mm -hmm. an electric atmosphere. Tonight, tip off 6 30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Reggie's going to be there. Check out his postgame stuff on CARE 11. We'll both be here tomorrow to break down all the action. Um, you want to go around the NBA, the rest of the playoffs, real quick here? I know the okay. Nets, um, they squared off and squandered a big halftime lead and watched the Celtics rally back. They take both games at home. Nets now down 2 0. Mm. And Durant and Kyrie, they're ice cold. Any chance they can heat back up heading into Brooklyn and make this series close again? For your sake, that's your pick. I need it. I mean, come on. Come on. Do it for Luke. Do it for come Luke. Come on, man. No, I, you know what? It's so funny because um, I think KD is still one of the best players in all of the NBA. But he is getting older. And as he's gotten older, I think his game is a little bit more finesse than it is, you know, kind of like showing that burst like he used to have Banging especially around, too yeah. yeah and especially too after the Achilles injury you know it's That's just point. it's not the same burst but mm -hmm. i mean he's still still i mean that jumper oh. is just smooth i mean Deadly. but but they put the clamps on him last night yeah, like yeah he was horrible him and Kyrie like they had like Kyrie is you know is uh you know doing right Kyrie scored and, 10 and, points and, yeah, 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 he's, yeah, he's yeah. eating food on the bench and, you yeah. know, trying to get his strength up. And I'm just yeah. like, y'all are a hot mess right now. Yeah. Steve Nash, there were so many people talking about how Steve Nash was just like not drawing anything significant up on the sideline. He's just like, here, just give it to Durant and let him work. Right. And he just sits on the sideline like, please work. <laughs> That's it. Please work. And That's it's it. not working. Like, they were, they were clapping Durant up last night. And yeah. I think... It's it's funny because you got two NBA champions, uh, a former league MVP, Kyrie Irving has had MVP like performances. Like you never want to count those two guys out, but the Celtics look like the better team right now. Anytime you go up by seventeen, 
and and you overcome mm. that. Mm-hmm. Like I thought, you know, most people turned the channel. They were like, "Oh yeah, the Nets, the Nets, they got this one. Oh, this mm. will be that bounce back game too." It no wasn't. Doubt. It wasn't. No. The Celtics ended up like getting them and getting them good. It was just. It was like, wow, man, you you hit them with your best punch, and it still wasn't enough to beat them. It it really doesn't lend well to your no. pick, Luke. I'm no. I'm just saying. I'm not no. sure that it's gonna be like a sweep or anything, but. No, it's I'm not giving up yet, but that yeah. one that one hurt, man. That stings. You're right. When you give them yeah, your best man. shot, you try to steal one at home. It's not yeah. over yet. I mean, again, you're supposed to uh, – again, those Boston's supposed to win those games at home, right? I don't know what the, the line was, but uh, not over yet. But that, that does not bode well just for the mentality and the momentum uh, mm-hmm. heading back to Brooklyn. Katie, again, ice cold, shooting four of 17. Kyrie scores just 10 points. That Boston crowd getting under his skin a little bit. Yeah, a lot of high expectations for a phenomenal – series heading into that one she ain't over yet but not looking good chicago bulls stole one against the bucks they tied that series up one game apiece mm-hmm. thanks to demar DeRozan, 41 points this was chicago's check this out second win in the last 19 meetings against the bucks so knowing that reggie <laughs> do they stand a chance against one of the nba's best i believe the bucks were your pick to go all the way yeah i give them a chance man i mean but the 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 bucks are strong man like right I, you watch them and you just like, how are you guys this good? I don't care. Like, what? What are we doing? Like, right. you know, you look at you look at guys like like Giannis, and you're like, okay, you're you're a generational talent. So we get that you're you're in a, a league of your own. You're great. Yep. You're you're really good. Not even really good. You're you're excellent. But like, then you look at his complimentary players: Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday, you know, uh, uh, Bobby Portis, mm. and it's like. He has probably like the best surrounding cast that you can ask for out of a guy that does what he does. And it's like everybody. (sighs) Okay, coming into last year, I thought that his talent surrounding him was average, right? That's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. Yep. These guys are above average. Pretty like, good. yeah, pretty like solid. they're they're pretty good. Like, anytime you can get Drew Holiday playing to his potential and Chris Middleton playing to his potential, game in and game out, it's just like, uh, maybe they are good. Like, maybe mm. maybe it's not a fluke. And I think you know, for the Bulls to to steal that one, they're gonna need that type of performance. It sucks that they don't have Lonzo because Ugh. like. He's he's a guy that can kind of facilitate and get things moving on the court. And, you know, sometimes you play a little bit more hero ball and maybe that's not the type of basketball that you want to play in the playoffs. But like if they can continue to get that type of effort from DeRozan, I give him a chance. Yeah, no doubt. A lot of good basketball going on here. I know some of these series are a little lopsided. Philly up 3-0 now on, on Toronto, but a lot of good series going on here uh, coming up the rest of the week. All right, time has come. My favorite part of the show. I'm putting Reggie on the hot seat, covering all the latest hot topics in Minnesota sports called What Does It Mean? Let's jump right into it. First up, the Twins lost last night to the Royals again. Mm. This time, failing to score a single run, losing 2-0. to zero. The Twins have now gone on another offensive cold streak, having gone scoreless in 13 straight innings. Byron Buxton stretched out before the game and may be able to return in the next few games. However, even when Buxton comes back, what does it mean for the rest of the lineup? Struggles that seems to be seeing the ball well, taking good at-bats, generating walks, but when it comes to scoring runs, they've been shut out a major league most three times already this season. All right, I'm bringing up Carlos Correa's stats this Ooh, season. I don't know if I want to see that. Batting 214, something crazy <laughs> like that. You wish. He's batting 190. One <laughs> I do wish run, he was 214. Yeah. Eight yeah. hits. Eight <sighs> hits and 42 at bats. <sighs> and it's yeah, like, great, yo. Great, huh? This is the big ticket signing. You know, he he talked about how, you know, this is uh, a, a a place for him to kind of instill some of those championship, you know, mindsets and mentalities Mentality, and, yep. and and all of that. And uh, you you delete a dog. What's going on? Like I, he he insists that you know like he'll break out of it. And you know he's a he's a star player, and so we expect him to be able to do that. But at the same time, it's like man, this team is gonna go as you go. Like no doubt. 
you the champ on the team. Like you you been there and they're trying to get there. Yeah. Like we the, need the, to see a little bit more from from him. It's it's just kind of discouraging, you know, the, like at one night, I mentioned this last night, one night the bats are red hot and the pitching is is bad. The other yep. night it's the other way around. Some nights, like last night, it was both. You know, mm. like it was, the pitching wasn't necessarily bad last night. Two but runs, yeah. They didn't. I knew what they, you didn't want. they didn't get any run support. And it's just mm. like, yo, like the bats were supposed to be the strength of this team, and you go out against the Royals, a team that you know you're jockeying for last place with in the division, and you can't you can't muster up any run. You scatter five hits over nine innings, like. What are we doing? What are we doing? Hey, here's the thing, too. It's like there's a lot of easy things to just pick off the, the low branch tree as far as excuses. Byron Buxton's been injured. Uh, the, the pitching rotation, still trying to figure out the bullpen. But if you're Carlos Correa, you got no excuses. It doesn't matter if Byron Buxton's in the lineup or not. It doesn't matter what the pitching's doing or isn't doing. You're Carlos Correa. You have to be able to be the leader in that clubhouse mm -hmm. again and show that this is the championship mentality. Like you said, Reggie, I'm going to instill this into my surroundings and hopefully let it influence them. So we'll see yeah. how it all shakes out. I'm sure today he'll go four for five, <laughs> uh, four ribbies, uh, you know, two stolen bases. You we know, would love uh, to see it. Sports Center top 10 play uh, in the field, but uh, it's just they can't put it all together, Reggie. So uh, certainly a frustrating start. Again, tough schedule to start for sure. Another easy kind of excuse for the Twins fans, but um, nonetheless, uh, just not the start you want. All right, next one. What does it mean? The Wild face off tonight back at home versus the Vancouver Canucks, looking to extend their home winning streak to three games. However, with seven games remaining, the Wild's playoff picture is looking more and more like they'll likely face off either with the Blues or the Flames. So what does it mean for their chances of advancing past the first round? And if the playoffs were today, who would you rather the Wild square off against? I don't want to play the Blues. No, you scare me. I don't want that. I don't want that. There's some demons that need to be exercised Ooh. against them anyway. And it's just like, dang, man. Like, I guess you got to... You gotta conquer your your uh, your demons at one point, so it's it's likely to happen. But like, whatever matchup I want, I don't want the 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 Blues. Mm -hmm. I mean, they haven't played well this season against Nashville either, so I'm not sure that I want them. Yeah, but the Blues, either. there's just this deep, long rooted psyche going yeah. on though too with them, man. You said it; they got some serious demons going on for sure. Yeah, give me the Flames, man. I I I'll take the Flames. And we'll we'll fight that fire before we we fight the the blues because it's just like, man, they're they're like clicking right now and, yeah, and they everybody's put up eight, feeling eight goals the other night, right? Come on, eight man. To three. Like, what are come we on, doing? Hey, can we at least just save them for the second round? Right? I mean, can we come on. Get a, Do we what? have to get them right out the gate? Are you? Yeah, kidding? that seems unfair. Maybe that's the best way to maybe exercise it. I mean, if you're gonna have to exercise those demons eventually, anyway, maybe you want them in the first round. Just get it over with. But um, all right, moving on. <laughs> Young star receivers like Debo Samuel, AJ Brown, Terry McLaurin. They've all decided to skip their team's voluntary workouts while they demand new contracts. All three mm -hmm. were drafted in the same class three years ago and have one year left on their rookie deal. This comes at a time when salaries for wide receivers have skyrocketed thanks to deals like Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, Stephon Diggs just the last month. Mm -hmm. What does it mean for the future of the position when it comes to how teams will view acquiring wide receivers in the draft? or through off-season free agency and trades. What's your take on this, Reggie? I think it goes back to what we talked about earlier. Like these teams are going to make decisions like I mean like you you wouldn't think that the Packers would get rid of DeVonte Adams. Never you in a million did I think yeah, that. Yeah, no you wouldn't way. think you wouldn't think the Chiefs would get a, uh no get way. away from Tyreek Hill like what? Like, are you serious? Like, Dude. he's these are two of the best receivers in football. But Proven. then you look at, yeah, then you look at deals that guys like them, Diggs, and then freaking Christian Kirk, the deal that he got. That ruined the from, league. That may have ruined the landscape of the free agency league. I that think, may have I think a, lot a lot of GMs, up. yeah, I think a lot of GMs are very ticked off by that contract for sure. Debo, Terry, DK, they were all looking at that like, mm. we better than him. Like, right. uh, pay up. Right. Pay up. And Show me the money. The 49ers were like, 
hey, we love you. <laughs> You're great. But we can but work something out, right? He's like, right. nah, trade me. I'm tired of being a wide receiver running back anyway. That's another just, thing. Yeah. It's just so interesting because, like, like I said, every freaking year you got these wide receivers coming out in the draft who are just killing it. Like they I don't know what's in the training that these guys are getting in college and, and pre college and all that. There at Ohio but State. like Right. But like, yeah, like these these guys are coming ready made to be stars in the league. I mean, freaking Jamar Chase sits out a whole year of football and comes in and, and just lights the league on fire last year mm-hmm. after Dang. everybody thought he was going to be uh, uh early bust because he was dropping all those passes in the preseason. It was just like oh, Jalen okay. Waddle right behind him. Yeah, Waddle. From Miami. Uh, Justin uh, Jefferson coming on. Uh, Justin Jefferson. Devontae Smith year. last year. First yeah, just, round wide. They're, they're all over the place, man. It, it's, it's like, look, okay – and there's something to be said about being a proven commodity in the league, okay? So you're always going to have a market for those guys, guys that are proven, have shown that they can do it. So you're always going to get teams like the Jets or the Dolphins or, you know, some, some of these some of these teams that, you know, we're like, okay, yeah, we want the Browns. Mm. You know, we'll we'll take a swing at a guy like that. Let let's do it. And so they'll they'll be the teams to pay some of these stars but it's just like okay uh star diva wide receiver do you want to make your money and go play for washington commanders uh, do you want to do you want to go play for the houston texans huh exactly. do you do you want to <laughs> you know what i mean like do you want to go play for some of these teams that they usually always struggle every year or do you want to like actually be on a contender take a good deal and 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 prosper that way and i think it's like well look if you want to get paid, then maybe you got to go to one of these these like bad teams because these good teams are showing that they can just draft a guy and replace you. Well, that's the thing, too. I mean, if I'm a receiver, the first thing and only thing I'm looking at is who's throwing me the ball, right? Mm-hmm. There's nothing more important than that. Even coaching and, and offensive line, running back. Who's my quarterback? Yeah. And that's why when, when teams like the Packers with a proven quarterback and, and the Chiefs with a proven quarterback traded those wide receivers, I think it sent a message that, hey, remember, the quarterback always makes the receiver. It's not the other way around, right? These receivers sometimes certainly make the, the quarterback look good, but more times than not, it's the quarterback throwing those receivers open and making them look good. So, okay, Reggie, you did it again. You survived the gauntlet. <laughs> Join us tomorrow recapping Game 3 playoffs with the Wolves and Memphis Grizzlies back at home in the Target Center. Tip-off tonight, 6.30 Central Standard Time. We're going to be talking more NFL draft just one week away tomorrow as well. Remember – to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join us every day for another episode covering all the biggest topics in Minnesota sports. He's Reggie Wilson. Follow him on Twitter at Reggie Wilson TV and on Care 11. I'm Luke Inman on Twitter at Luke underscore Spinman. Tune in tomorrow to Superior Sports Talk, part of Locked On Sports Minnesota. For Reggie, I'm Luke. Till tomorrow, signing out. Be blessed. Spread love today. Go Timberwolves. <laughs> This is Superior Sports Talk with Reggie Wilson and Luke Inman, part of Locked On Sports Minnesota.